I don't know why you'd miss a video on my channel, but if you did, here's what happened. I did a makeup tutorial recreating my gorgeous makeup look from Getessa 2, Flesh Without Blood, and took you from this to this. Much better! Even though I made some mistakes along the way, I trusted the process and came out feeling better than ever. I feel so sexy and alive. And that's what you missed on my channel. Yep, that's me. It's Lux, your favorite Get Tester girl. Look at me go, I'm making another YouTube video, giving the people exactly what they want. I love you. Lux Queen. And I love you. So I know you're all here to find out how I went from this to this. And don't worry, we'll get there. I have been in the biggest funk of my life. But I decided that the best way to cheer myself up would be to completely throw myself into a project. So I'm very excited about that. This outfit is going to be a collaboration with the Etsy artist Bloodlight and Bambi. She let me choose one of her masks and then I've been tasked to create an outfit based on the mask. So this is the one I chose. I thought it was um, really delicate. I like the color. I'm gonna go sketch out a design. My biggest inspiration about what I wanted this dress to be, like Prairie Girl, Romeo and Juliet, um, Cottage Nightcore. She has to hide the bottom of her face because the city is infected with plague. A little while ago on a live, I made this bear head. So that is gonna be the center. And it's got these huge bows. It's like off the shoulder, but there's like a sheer part up here. You know, the golden age of Disney, they design their princesses and they're like not in a specific time period at all. It's just like little different things that they like from each period. That is this. Here are the materials I used for this project. For the main body of the dress, I chose this lavender crepe back satin because I liked how it moved and it matched the mask. I got this fabric for the sleeves and I thought it was fun because it had like embroidered roses on it. Ooh. Then I got this purple glitter bug sheer stuff for ruffles and bows, some elastic, a thrifted top. Let's do it. I started with a skirt because I had the clearest vision on how I would create it. I measured from the center of my chest to as long as I wanted the skirt portion to be, 29 inches in my case. I measured the crepe back satin and it was exactly 29 inches, my lucky day. Ta-da! Now that I cut the skirt pieces, I'm gonna just quickly hem them so that it has a really nice hem. And then I'm just gonna pin it all the way across so that it'll stay in place while I run it through my sewing machine. I didn't like how the sewing machine made the hem look so obvious, so for the front panel of the skirt, I did a blind hem stitch, which you should probably watch another video about how to do it, because I am definitely doing it wrong here. I laid out my pieces on the ground, and I pinned the edges together. I think it's gonna be okay. Later that same evening. I went and laid down for a second, and then when I woke up, it was eight o'clock at night, my plan of finishing the dress in one day is starting to look less and less like a reality. Basically, I have the skirt piece together. As much as I don't want to do this, I feel like I'm just going to put it aside for the night, sleep on it, and start fresh tomorrow. So, see you at day two. Hey everybody, it's me, Lex, back at it again. Today I've woken up, I have a fresh mindset, I have new goals, new plans. My neighbor just came out of their house and I'm, I'm really like self-conscious. 
I started this project as a way to uplift myself, get myself excited about my art again. So that's just kind of the goal I'm going in with today. Self-doubt, <sighs> day two. I don't know how I want to start. I started by sewing a wide stitch with a low tension all the way around the top of the skirt. Now I begin the arduous task of gathering it all, which is gonna take forever. thing about doing this is you have to be really careful so the string doesn't break because then you have to start all over and it sucks. Here's me modeling the thrifted top that would eventually become the top of my dress. I pinned where I wanted my skirt to start and then used those markings as a guide for where to cut. Then I gathered the whole skirt to the width of the shirt and lined up the side seams. I've got my skirt turned inside out. I'm putting the shirt inside the skirt. Now I've got the front pinned and I'm gonna do the same thing on the back. For the bows on the sides of the shoulders, I started by cutting out a few different pieces. Two rectangles of the crepe back satin, two rectangles of the iridescent <laughs> sheer purple, and two rectangles of tulle. Structure! I made stacks of fabric with tulle on bottom, then crepe back satin, and then the iridescent. I folded this little fabric sandwich in half and sewed around the three open sides, leaving a small gap in the center so I could turn it inside out. I'm using my scissors to poke the corners so that they're nice and sharp. Then I ironed both bow rectangles flat. Before, after. I'm sewing a line of loose stitches down the center of each of these panels so that when I um, pull it together, it will give us that bow shape that we so desperately are looking for. To make the bow ties, I made a shape that kind of looks like a superhero mask with no eyes and cut two in the satin and two in the iridescent. I pinned and sewed around the edges and then flipped it inside out using the same method as earlier. Next, I elastic banded the two pieces together, ironed a small rectangle of fabric for the center, and used a simple whip stitch to attach it all together. Here is the completed bow. I'm gonna finish up the other one, and that's gonna be a wrap on day two. To be continued on day three. I really gotta finish. gonna nail down these sleeves. That's the game plan, let's get to it. Oh! I wanted to add some iridescent ruffles to various places on the dress, so I cut the fabric into strips and used a lighter to keep the edges from fraying. I'm just gonna tell myself that these burns give it character. And I felt like I was doing this server for so long. Then I sewed a wide length stitch with loose tension down the center of the ruffles and gathered them by pulling the string until it was the length I desired. I pinned the ruffle along the front of the dress and sewed it together. I hope I'm in the frame. Let's make sleeves! Update on the sleeves. Mm. Ooh. Um, so these are the sleeves. I think they look um, fun and cute. I'm gonna put them on with the dress. Ah, moment of truth. Here we go. What do we think? Oh, I was really innovative in the sleeves. Oh, they're separates. I was too lazy. <laughs> separates. Now that I've almost completed, I have. I want to wear it. Oh, this is fun. Remember that bear head thing I made? I constructed this gorgeous aesthetic mounting for it, but then I didn't like it, so it was ultimately not used on the final product. That's showbiz, baby. I ended up just hot gluing the bear head onto the dress with a little bow underneath it. <laughs> what is this? For my shoes, I spray painted some boots I had that were dirty, previously seen in my untouched music video in Get Dusted 3. When I ran out of spray paint, I used this. With a few strokes of paint, my masterpiece was complete. I just did a fitting. I looked at the whole dress. I don't want to spoil it. I don't want to give it away. 
This is the end of day three. We were supposed to be done on day one and now it's day three. Whatever. We're here, we've done it. I'm super excited, but I'll see you in the final, final rundown, final look, fantasy. Mm -hmm.